So the name of my talk is Words That Get in the Way, but it is all about becoming your USDO. So I used to eat out of the trash can. True story. We'll get to that in a little bit. What I'm here to speak to you about today is the power of words. And not just the words that I'm speaking here on the stage, but the words that have accumulated over your lifetime. All of those words. So, my world used to be about dance. From age four to 17, you could find me in a tacky leotard two to three times a week at some dance studio. I fell in love with moving and leaping and feeling free in my body. I loved dancing. And yes, that's me in that tacky costume. And I had a closet full of tacky costumes. I used to watch solid bull dancers and imagine myself shimmying and shaking to all of that music and just enjoying the moment of being free in my body. All of that came to a screeching halt. It was one chilly evening in May in the Boston area where I'm from. I was 17 at the time. I was in a two-hour dance class, had been working my butt off. And my teacher, Miss Patricia, pulled me aside and she said, Julie, I can tell you're trying really hard, but you're too big. You're not shaped like a dancer. I'd recommend that you stop. In that moment, my whole world felt like it had crashed. My heart was in my throat. I was fighting back hot tears. And what I heard her say was not just that I was too big, too fat, not meant to be a dancer. I heard I was too everything wrong and that I was not good enough. It was one of the saddest moments of my life. And what occurred after that is that I stopped dancing for 20 years. I'd go to events, to weddings, parties. Oh, yeah, OK, maybe if I had a drink or two, I might be on the dance floor. But in the end, I always came off thinking, I'm so embarrassed, I'm ashamed, I'm not good enough, I shouldn't be out there. I'll just pause for a minute so you can sink that in and see if maybe that's happened to you. So the thing that I love most, moving and dancing and feeling free in my body, I had allowed one person's words to rob me of my joy. And then I took those words and I applied them to all areas of my life. I didn't just hear I was too big to be a dancer. I heard I was too big in life and I was not good at everything that I did. And the way that I dealt with that was to use and abuse food. And I'm guessing there might be some of you in the audience who have dealt with this as well. And I used food, I binged, I would steal food from my office fridge, from friends, from convenience stores. I would have stolen your food. I hid it. I hid it in my car. I hid it in my room. I hid food in the bathroom. And yes, I let her words, those words, affect me so much that I ate out of a trash can, often. You see, I digested those words literally and figuratively. I believed them. I made them my own. And as I was decaying inside, I allowed those words that she said after dance class, I allowed them to dance in my mind and my body for 20 years. And it wasn't until 30 grand of therapy and a personal development program that I finally saw that story. I held it up to the light, and I was working with a really wise mentor. And I was sharing my story, and all of a sudden, he said to me, Julie, are those words true? I thought, of course they're true. What are you talking about? That's what she said. They are true. And then, then I paused. I pondered, I thought, and it was like I'd been viewing my life through this filthy, dirty window that did not serve me and did not serve you or anyone else. And for one of the first moments in my life, I realized 
that the words that one person out of seven billion people, words of one person, that I believed those words, that I had made those words be my gospel. I was living them like that was the truth. Lack of confidence, self-loathing, shame. All of that was digested, and I took that as the truth. And I realized that I had given power to those words. I had chosen to do that. I had given her power. Well, after the realization, the very next morning, I'll have you know that I signed my butt up for every single dance class known to humankind. <laughs> I took modern, contemporary, bar, ballet, jazz, Broadway jazz with jazz hands. I took Zumba. I took African dance, capoeira. I took hip hop, which I love and I took ballroom dance. And it was like reigniting a part of my being, my soul, part of the reason I love to be human is to move to music. I found that joy again, and my jazz shoes. And I realized where, I, I just thought to myself, where else am I living like these words are true? Where else is that happening? And I started to look at all areas of my life my health, my marriage, my career, my family, my spirituality, my relationship with myself, most importantly, with myself. And I started to look at those words and note those words, and they were not very kind. They were not. But it was the beginning of realizing that I had the power to create words that were going to serve and make a difference. So one of the miracles for me is that after doing all of this research and work and looking at what was I believing and what words had I made my own, for fun, on the side, I became certified to teach bar and ballet and dance. And guess what I get to do? I get to teach women and men of all sizes, of all shapes, how to be free in their body, how to move, how to dance. But most importantly, as I teach them, I use empowering, uplifting, and loving words. And I've had more people come to me and say, Julie, thank you for reigniting that sense of freedom in my body, their sacred birthright. And it's something that I do now on the side for the joy of it. I'll have you know that I left my cushy job, corporate job, and I recreated my entire career. And what I do today is I help people to find joy and to create words that are going to help them to live their best life. So as I close, I want to share with you and remind you that words have meaning. They define us. They have the power to shape how we live our life. I believe all of us here, all of us on the planet, have sacred gifts, skills, talents, and passions, and that we're meant to use them. We're meant to express them. Where are you letting your words get in the way? I'll leave you with this call to action. You have the power to make meaning of words. And I'd invite you to ask this of yourself. Where am I letting words get in the way of me living my most extraordinary life? This is the one powerful question that when I asked that to myself, my whole life changed. And I suspect yours will too. Your words can get in the way, or your words can be the way. Your choice. Thank you.